Okay, now before I get on to the remainder of the plan of how to actually uh, circumvent your town and then uh, set yourself up for a um, post-apocalyptic society, there is a couple of things I should mention. One of which, you're probably wondering why I'm still not wearing a shirt. The reason is that I'm trying to get you uh, uncomfortable with the idea of being naked and vulnerable. And the reason uh, I'm trying to stress this enough, uh, not so much to desensitize you, but to constantly remind you of this. Human beings without technology and without our, um, you know, without our conventions of society are naked, fragile animals. We are worse off than some of, the re some of the rest of the species on the planet. The only reason that we have survived is because of what we have up here. Our technological and tool extensions are what make us what we are. If we are, um, if we are without them, we are vulnerable and we are, uh, we are basically dead. So here's what we're looking for. We are now continuing. By now, uh, assuming that you followed the plan correctly, you should have a, uh, a reasonable series of people with expertise up in your area, um, again, up near the circle here, uh, who probably already raided your local university uh, for all its chemical supplies and the like. You should by now also have a couple of buildings available or a couple of major tent areas available. These are probably where you have, um, have probably already installed um, uh, you know, leftover technology, you know, leftover technology, medicine, uh, what have you. Now the problem is, is that chances are you already have a chemistry lab, so you can manufacture medicines, but you don't have enough of a medical basis. Uh, you don't have enough of a, uh, of a of an infrastructure to be able to build a basis. Chances are you probably also tried to build a latrine, but if you don't know anything about civil engineering, you might have uh, inadvertently uh, put your latrine close to your water supply, and you're probably already suffering from a large number of cases of typhoid by now. So here's what you want to do next. You want to read through the freaking manuals that you got from the uh, from the university library. As I've told you before, knowledge is power and is absolutely essential for technological civilization. Now remember, sewers are highly automated, which means that you want to go back to something of a Roman type. I'm now going to diverge from your plans to how to uh, circulate your town to help uh, to help uh, to help construct a part of your society. Um, actually, no. You know what? Let me go through all the combing of what you want to go through for each of the coming times, and then I'll tell you how to construct the society afterwards. So. Here's a few things that you want more to do. The next one that you want to deal with is um, the next one you want to deal with. Now remember, I'm still doing uh, suburb type based living. Um, this is for people who are in my type of living style. Um, if you are living in an urban inner city, I'll get to you guys in a sec. The next thing you want to do is uh, you want to comb your library again. Um, sorry, uh, let me see which side I'm on. Yeah, sorry. You want to go, um, you're in your outer outskirts, you want to actually go through the city or try to hit the outskirts as much as possible. Try to hit your library. Now the thing is, I've drawn this map a little inaccurately, as chances are most of your libraries, um, or most of your outlets of a local library, are uh, the biggest ones are going to be right in city center. This is going to be difficult, especially if you are dealing with uh, large hordes of people who are still all trying to fight each other, uh, riders, looters, or worse than that, zombies. Um, again, zombies are highly unlikely. Chances are by now the city will have been deserted, or you will be dealing with small pockets of people who are living like animals. Um, these, unfortunately, are considerably more dangerous than zombies, as unfortunately they are intelligent, but they are um, they have uh, considerably better reflexes and are actually on par with you. Um, they also have the capability to hide and will probably uh, try to pounce on you at any chance you get. So you need to be aware for, of how to work with guerrilla warfare, because chances are your human enemies are going to have, uh, develop, devise a tactic for that. So, when you go uh, to your library, the very, um, the very first spot you actually want to go in advance of that is, um, again, like I said, you probably already raided your cafeteria from your local university. You probably also raided your pharmacy on site and the like. Um, one of the places that you're also going to want to raid is you probably also raided uh, any um, local farmer's markets or, or uh, convenience stores or anything like that on the outskirts. You want to now go and hit the major city supermarkets. You want to, um, one of the things you want to do is actually go through uh, every single major supermarket and um, deal with stuff like that. Um, you want to get your food supplies and bring them up. The reason I'm suggesting now prolonged food supplies rather than hitting the supermarkets first is that everybody's going to hit the supermarkets and chances are they're probably going to all panic buy out and um, you know, you're know you going to want to scavenge what's remaining out of the supermarkets um, you know, for fear of this. Now, one of the things I should mention in advance is that if you're looking for a post-apocalyptic society, a well-stocked canned food larder, um, preferably with uh, you know, preferably getting your car or your trunk ready with a few major survival kits so you can bring food out um, would be a very good idea. Rationing food would also be a good idea, and starting to learn to farm would now would be also go a good idea. Uh, hunting and living off the land is also a very good idea, even in a post-apocalyptic society. The one exception to this, if, you've li um, if your country has already been bom bombarded with nuclear weapons, um, uh, now, of course, one of the things I want to mention is the fact that um, you are dealing, uh, you are starting to deal with a near post-apocalyptic society before nuclear weapons have been launched. If nuclear weapons have already been launched and have already hit your major city centers, you are fucked. 
If you were living in a secondary city, say uh, the size of uh, Vancouver, will probably be hit as well. Um, but the thing is, that new, uh, where they're probably launching for nuclear weapons is military industrial sites. Uh, uh, cities will be hit as well because they're trying to take out uh, in infrastructure. If you are living in a place like Victoria, you will probably already be radiation heated hit, but you can still at least uh, get books and the like out. Now, this may provide some low-level radiation contamination, but, you know, radiation sickness only kills in 10 to 20 years anyway. So, um, you know, you're looking to just survive an extra couple of decades. If you're lucky, you'll be able to postpone that for long enough for your technological society to gear down. I'm just trying to help you slow down the, uh, the inevitable at this point. So, uh, what you're looking at now is, again... But again, remember, assuming that your city has uh, dealt with this and assuming that the riots have not taken out all the supermarkets, you want to hit all the convenience stores and everything else on your way out. You probably already have by now. Um, but you want to take a sweep back and still go through and look for the back, uh, look for the back ages. Um, ra uh, raid the houses, raid you know the other stuff, because you never know. There might still be groups of people who um, there might still be groups of people who happen to have. Um, you know, their food kicking around, uh, you know, other stuff like that. Also, at this point, don't forget to get a few board games and the like, so this way people are not, you know, have, have means of entertaining themselves. Anywho, the next stop you want to go for is you want to hit your library. You want to hit your library. And, uh, sorry, your library and your hospital. Um, the two reasons you want to hit these two guys is because by now, um, most of the riots are probably out by now. You also probably want to hit your police station by this point because of the fact that you might be able to find some weapons left over. Um... Other areas you want to hit. Uh, you want to hit schools. You want to hit um, basically any major centers of society. You want to hit last. And the reason I say you want to hit them last is for a couple of reasons. Um, you also want to hit pharmacy. Uh, the reason you want to hit hospitals eventually last is because you might be able to find uh, basic tools. Uh, infra intravenous feeding, uh, surgical tools, sterilizers for various medical equipment, that sort of thing. Um, you want to go through this on your sweeps. And you want to take. Um, and the reason you want to hit libraries as well, secondary, so this way you can bring all the extra books in. Uh, anything that your university library doesn't have, chances are a public city library will. Um, you want to, and this time you want to get books which are also fiction and the like, so this way people have something to read. This is more now for um, for you know mental well-being. Uh, you also want to hit your local cop shop after the riots have hit, so this way you can get access to extra um, guns and the like. Now, note there is a, a, a major problem with this. You are going to be having to make homemade bullets in order to be able to deal with this. Um, they're not going to be as effective. Um, you know they're not going to be uh, they're not going to be as effective uh, in dealing with uh, you know if if you're lucky to find bullets then great um, you should also figure out how to be able to make uh, get uh, professional art go to sport and good stores um, get professional archery bows and arrows and that sort of thing um, anyway I think you get the idea basically on multiple trips go into the city get medical equipment get supplies get machine shops get sources of metal um, you know stuff like that if you want to also um, Try to get uh, enough material, uh, you know, saved from recycling plants and the like, that you can actually um, not re just recycle paper, but recycle aluminum pop cans, anything like that. So this way you can get the metal available. Um, now, recycling pop cans is actually one of the few things which is economical. If you want, if you recycle aluminum pop cans, you can, um, you know, it's actually more cost effective to do that than to actually mine uh, mine new aluminum metal out of the ground. This will be very effective later on for when you are wanting to build um, parts for guns and the like. Uh, or parts for you know for any uh, industrial machinery that you for any machinery that you need. So use aluminum, recycle it, and then put it through the machine shops. Uh, you know, recycle it, resmelt it, then put it through the machine shops again once you've got the final blocks of it. Uh, you know, to be able to build molds of it and the like. Um, now, of course, when your machine shops break down, then you're fucked. But until then, you know, try to uh, build as new, as many new molds as possible out of any new aluminum or any new metal that you can bring in. Remember, scrap metal and recycling of metal is very effective. And uh, again, if you can find it on the, uh, if you can find any about how that works in a library, great. Chances are you'll probably be able to find it there. Um, at this point, I would recommend as well going back and cleaning through the entire library, not just the science and the engineering sections. It's this way you can learn how to set up your own recycling plants and other stuff like that. Uh, chances are, I pro there's probably also a great number of books out there on how recycling works and the like, and how you can set uh, how you can set up your own recycling plant in your own local area uh, for any event of a post-apocalyptic society. So that deals with that. Now, for your inner urban living, uh, if you are wanting to do that, uh, if you are wanting to do this, your plan is to get out of the city and then do the exact same thing. What you want to do is again, if you are living in an urban city, um, remember people are panic buying around you. Stay away from hospitals and police uh, stations, as that's where probably most people are going to go to try to go for protection. The other place they're probably going to go is panic buying supermarkets. When you want to do, go to your local convenience store. Stock up on everything, then get in your car and try to find the quickest route out of the city to the power plant. The sooner you're there, 
the sooner 